way did it work for phone call? The decision came across the computer, I think it was 1037. The columnist behind me, I was reading it from the beginning, and he's standing over my shoulder and he yells at me, go to the end, go to the end. I remember Mrs. Spar, Bertha Spar, knocking on my door and interrupting my class. The 139-page opinion ruled that intelligent design is not science. Finding it had been introduced for religious reasons, Judge Jones decided it was unconstitutional to teach intelligent design in Dover science classes. Both defendants and many of the leading proponents of intelligent design make a bedrock assumption which is utterly false. Their presupposition is that evolutionary theory is antithetical to a belief in the existence of a supreme being and to religion in general. To be sure, Darwin's theory of evolution is imperfect. However, the fact that a scientific theory cannot yet render an explanation on every point should not be used as a pretext to thrust an untestable alternative hypothesis grounded in religion into the science classroom or to misrepresent well-established scientific propositions. The citizens of the Dover area were poorly served by the members of the board who voted for the intelligent design policy. Citing what he called the breathtaking inanity of the school board's decision, he found that several members had lied to cover their tracks and disguise the real purpose behind the intelligent design policy. The crushing weight of the evidence indicates that the board set out to get creationism into science classrooms and uh, intelligent design was simply the vehicle that they utilized to, to do that. Jones recommended to the U.S. attorney that he investigate bringing perjury charges against Buckingham and Bonsell for lying under oath. And the overwhelming evidence at trial, he said, established that intelligent design is a religious view, a mere relabeling of creationism and not a scientific theory. In an era where we're trying to cure cancer, uh, where we're trying to prevent pandemics, where we're trying to keep uh, science and math education on the cutting edge in the United States, to introduce and teach bad science to ninth grade students makes very little sense to me. You know, garbage in, garbage out, and it doesn't benefit any of us who benefit daily from scientific discoveries. The school district was permanently forbidden to teach intelligent design in its science curriculum. The administration was ordered to pay the plaintiff's legal fees, totaling more than a million dollars. And the election of a new school board opposed to intelligent design meant no appeal of the ruling would be mounted. In the wake of the trial, Time magazine named Judge Jones one of the 100 most influential people of the year. But not everyone was so pleased with the judge's decision. To put it bluntly, I think he's a jackass. I think he went to clown college instead of law school, or else he went to law school and slept during the Constitution classes, because uh, his decision doesn't jive with the law. Uh, I think he should be on a bench, but it ought to be in a center ring of Ringling Brothers Circus. He, it's, it's disgusting. It makes me feel sad. We as a board were trying to make Dover the best school district it could be. Yeah, that was our goal. At least mine was. I was trying to, we were trying to take it up to make it the best. I think, first of all, you have to say we had a fair trial. I'm just disturbed about the extent of his opinion that it went way beyond what, it, what he should have gone into deciding matters of science. The Discovery Institute was also displeased. Soon after the decision, the Institute published a 123-page book distancing itself from the case and criticizing the ruling as judicial activism with a vengeance. The verdict turned out to be more controversial than Judge Jones had imagined. Following the trial, he received death threats. Jones and his family had to be placed under round-the-clock protection. I could never have imagined that I would receive a threats to my person in an establishment clause case, but that's what happened in the uh, 
Dover case. For newspaper reporter Lori Lebo, the verdict was bittersweet. Her father passed away just nine days after the judge's decision. They had never reconciled their differences, though Lori remains a strong supporter of evolution. Recently, her family took over management of her father's radio station, and Lori began hosting a weekly show. Evening, folks. We're going to listen to some Johnny Cash now. I talk to Jesus every day. In the end, though, there is probably one thing everyone in the case can agree on. The issue is certainly not over. One of the things that we've learned is that the opponents of evolution are persistent and resilient. And they're still out there. I had thought at one point that we would make a breakthrough on this issue and change the scientific community in my lifetime. Now I'm somewhat sobered by the force of the counterattack that we have received. And I see that it's going to be a longer process than that. I think history tells us that there is an enduring disagreement and dispute uh, in the United States as it relates to evolution. By no means did uh, my decision put a capstone on that, and that will proceed uh, for generations, I suspect. On the Intelligent Design website, hear Nova's senior executive producer explain why Nova took on this controversial topic. Watch any part of this program again, and much more. Find it on PBS.org. To order this show or any other NOVA program for $19.95 plus shipping and handling, call WGBH Boston Video at 1-800-255-9424.